Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to um I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to show you how to draw a feasible region, and to do that, I'm going to use these five inequalities, and then once I have my feasible region graphed, I'm going to show you how to use it to do a maximization or minimization problem, and I'm going to maximize z equals 6y plus 2x. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out what my feasible region is. So I've already done the first one just because it's very um, straightforward. I've written out my steps anyway. Um, the first thing I did, I knew I wanted to change this inequality into an equal sign. Um, and then I'm going, there's more than one way of doing it. Obviously, you don't have to change it to an equal sign, but that's the way I'm doing it. So I changed that to an equal sign, and then I changed um, it into y equals mx plus b form, and then I graphed it down here, and I found um, that the y-intercept is 24 and the x-intercept is 22 by setting over here x equal to 0 and here y equal to 0. And then what I did to find out which side of the line I need to shade, I picked a point that's not on my line. I picked the origin 0, 0, and I plugged that into my original inequality. I got 0x plus 3 times 0, not 0x, 0, 04x, so just 0, plus 3 times 0. Is that less than or equal to 72? It definitely is less than or equal to 72. So then I shade the side of my line where my point occurs. So I've shaded this side of my line. So I'm going to do the next one. Now this one um, is a bit harder and less straightforward because instead of having a less than or equal to sign, it has a greater than or equal to sign. So if you remember about inequalities, the way to change the sign is to multiply or divide by a negative. So I'm going to multiply by negative 1. So I'm going to get negative x minus y, that flips the sign for me, is less than or equal to negative 10. Um, I am going to, that should be an equal sign. Um, I'm going to, uh, I guess I'll move my y over first. So negative x equals negative 10 plus y, and then I'll move my 10 back over. So I'll get positive 10 minus x equals y. And then to graph that, I'm going to think when x equals 0, then it'll be 10 minus 0 equals y. So y is going to be 10. When y is 0, move this 10 to this side, negative 10 plus 0 is negative 10 equals negative x. So x equals 10. So both my x and y intercepts are going to be 10. So, you know, let's say that's, I don't know, around here. I'm going to draw in my line. And these lines really should have the little arrows on the end because they do go on forever. So then I'm going to, um, the origin's still not on that line, so I can use it again. So I'm going to pick 0, 0 and plug it into this original inequality. So x is 0 plus y is 0. It's greater than or equal to 10. Is 0 greater than or equal to 10? Uh, no, I don't think so. So I'm going to shade the side of the line that my point did not occur since it made my inequality false. So I'm shading this side of that line. Okay, last one. I've got, well not the last one, um, really I also had x is greater than or equal to 0, but that just makes it in the first quadrant. I did have y is greater than or equal to 5, which I guess I'll put in last. So I'm going to change this again to an equal sign and then put it in y equals mx plus b form. So 10x plus 3y equals 180. 
um, 3y equals 180 minus 10x divided by 3. y equals 180 divided by 3 is 60 minus 10 over 3x. So when x is 0, y is going to be 60. So I'll draw that up here somewhere on my graph. And then when y equals 0, that's going to be 60 on this side times 3 divided by 10. That's going to be 16.5. So I don't know, that's maybe around here somewhere. So I am going to draw in that line. Don't forget your little arrows. Okay, so again, zero, zero isn't on this line. Um, so I'm going to pick zero, zero when I'm going to use this equation. So. 10 times 0 plus 3 times 0, that's just 0. What is 0 less than or equal to 180? Yep, that's true. So I'm shading this side of my line. And I'm just going to label them really quick. This was y equals 60 minus 10 over 3x. And this one was y equals negative a third x plus 24 and this one was y equals 10 minus x. So I also had y is greater than 5 so I said this was 10 so you know 5 somewhere around there. So where are all my intersections of all my lines? Well I've got one here Got one here, intersecting with x is greater than or equal to 0. I've got an intersection here, here, and here. Okay, so I'm going to switch back. This is the, um, obviously, the feasible region. And I'm going to switch back to my other page. So here I've drawn the graph again. And now I'm going to show you how to solve the rest of this problem. The first thing I'm going to do is I've labeled the um, points of intersection as A, B, C, D, E. So now I need to find the X, Y point where these are actually existing because it is a place. So for A, it looks like that's 0 and 24. For B, it's not as easy. I've got the line y equals one third x plus 24 and that is intersecting with this line y equals negative 10 over 3x plus 60. So y equals this and y equals this. y is the same variable so if y equals y then this equals this. So I'm going to leave my little blank for a minute. So negative 10 over 3x plus 60 equals negative 1 third x plus 24. And when you rearrange all of that, you are going to get x equals 12, y equals 20. So that's going to be my point, 12. 20 and then um, C, point C, you're going to find the intersection of y equals 5 and y equals negative 10 over 3x plus 60. Um, I'm not going to do it. It's the same method as finding this. You know, you solve for x and then you plug your x back into one of the original equations to solve for y. And when you do that, you get 16.5 and 5 and then D you do the same method you'll get 5 comma 5 and E was over here so 
we know that it's going to be 0 and 10. Now, to find where we're going to maximize this, we're going to plug all these points in over here and use them to solve z equals 6y plus 2x. So I'm running out of room on my memory, co mem memory card. Oh, I can't talk anymore. Um, so what I'm, I'm not going to rewrite all these points just because I don't have time. So I'm going to just refer to the points I've written out over here. So I'm going to get z equals at a 6 times y was 24 plus 2 times x was 0 and that gives me a value of 144 that doesn't look right I'll write it again, there that's much better okay, 144 and then at B I'm going to use the same method and I also get 144 at B which is a problem, I get then 63 40 and 0. So when you get two maximums, it means you don't just have a point um, of maximums, you have a line. So where do point A and B occur? They occur right here, which means that this is a line of maximums, and that falls on this line, which is y equals negative one-third x plus 24. So there, we would say there is a line of maximums at y equals negative one-third x plus 24.